Take two. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can! Give me a hell yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Thomas! Sorry for the technical difficulties. Thank you, sir, for uh, for for kicking it with us today. And uh, hopefully you, you enjoyed some family time. I know we, we, re, we re, uh, rearranged the times for today, but um, my first question, sir. Yeah, I, pre I appreciate that, too. Oh, yeah, no problem. Family is everything, man. I totally get it. Uh, how did you link up so, with Rearview to do this track? Um, so I do these like lyric writing, melody writing sessions, right? And he hit me up to do one of those. And then he asked, you know, if he could hire me essentially to just sing the whole track. I was like, I don't really do that, but uh, sure. Why not? Let's, let's, let's try it. So we, we wrote the song together and, uh, and yeah, just kind of. Yeah, it came out great. Oh, the the wonders the wonders of connecting on Instagram. What beer are you enjoying today, sir? It looks like a Belgian weed of some kind. Very very good. Yes, it is a <laughs> um, it's a blue moon light sky. Have you had any of those before? I have. Those are those are pretty damn good. Hell yeah! It's but it's a new one. It's got pineapple in it. Ooh, nice. Which I didn't think was going to be good, and I was proven very wrong. It's delicious. If somebody wanted to work with you as far as getting a feature or a writing session, uh, what's the easiest way to go about hiring you for your services? DM me on Instagram, for just, sure. Just that simple. Hell yeah. Yep, it's that simple. When when you transitioned from, not transitioned from, but when Famous, when when you went from Famous to, to wanting to do another project and you ended up going with PostScript, what is the process of being so committed to a band for so long and still being that committed, but being like, you know what? I want to freshen things up. I want to do something different. What was the process behind coming up with PostScript? Um, I always loved pop music. So like that was a no brainer. Did my, did my camera switch? Is it still on? It, you're frozen, but we can hear you. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I hate it. I hate it so much. We just, we, we go. <laughs> when, when you left a second ago, I was like, you know what? I'm making an executive decision. We're going to terminate teams forever here in, in like two or three weeks and just go zoom style. But like, you're not, you're not messing with me as the host. Can you do that on teams? I feel like that's happening right now. I, I wouldn't no. do that to you. <laughs> no, not at all. But uh, I'm sorry. Can you, can you repeat what you were saying as far as just going about the, the process of yeah. creating another project? Yeah. I've always really loved pop music. Um, and I found, you know, myself listening to that kind of music way more than like metal or metalcore or anything like that. Um, so I, I just was like, I'm just going to do it. You know, I'm going to take a swing at it and see what happens. Cause like I can, I can not just scream. I can sing a little bit. So, <laughs> so I thought, why not? Let's give it a try. And I got to sing like in lower registers and do all this, all this fun stuff. Um, but then I still did some heavy stuff with uh, with PostScript, anyways. So yeah, like Warzone was Try definitely not to limit myself so much. Warzone is definitely one of the heavier ones. What would you say is a good example of the complete opposite of Warzone? The complete opposite. Um, so suddenly, that song's like a Disney song. We're looking for the complete opposite. I think you've delivered the complete opposite. I love it. Oh, it is a Disney song. Like, yeah. If Disney ever reached out to you, would you would you totally do some kind of Disney material for them? Hundred percent. I mean, that's got to be yeah, a fat, be that's got to be a fat paycheck, right? Right. It's yeah. got to be. There's no way it's not. <laughs> Mac, uh, Mac, I know you're a huge fan of JT. What what what's the first question you'd like to ask him? Um, man, put me right on the spot. <laughs> that's what um, I do. I did. <laughs> <laughs> when did you know, like? with famous or even postscript like this is the point where i've made it like this this is how i know that i don't know this is how i know that i've gotten where i've wanted to be and i want to proceed to proceed to move more you called mama and said mama i made it what was that moment that's a great question 
because I think this is a common trait with a lot of people. Um, I struggle with being satisfied and that's something I'm working on every day. Uh, being okay with where I am in the moment. Um, because whenever it's, whenever you hit that next level, you almost don't even know, you don't realize you hit that next level. Um, so that's why it's so important to like, you know, center yourself and, and remember like where you are and where you were, um, and then where you can still go. So it, it's hard to answer that question because I don't know if I've ever felt like, oh, I've made it because in my mind, it was always like, oh, well, it's almost, I'm almost there. I'm almost playing those like arena shows. And you know what? I bet if I was playing an arena show, I'd be like, oh, I'm almost there. You know, it's, it's just never ending, um, which is, again, it's so important to be present in the, in the moment and really like take a step back and, and be grateful for, for where you are and what you have, or else you're going to live your whole life feeling that way. And it's not a fun way to live. Um, so I've just been doing a lot of like internal work, figuring that out because I don't, you know, I have done a lot and I'm super proud of it. Um, but I've always felt like, oh, I'm, it's just right there. Uh, and that's messed up because there's so many people who would just like die to be in the position I've, I'm in and to do the things I've done. Um, and I'm such an asshole for thinking that. So I'm like trying to, reprogram my brain to to be grateful for those things that's a good one gotcha yeah that's yeah. a good that's a good push like mentality to have where you're, you're never satisfied you always striving for better and greater i like that uh what's... it is it is good but you have to have that balance or else you're gonna be miserable you know right what's what would you say is the best advice from someone in the music industry you were given that you're willing to share Something somebody told you maybe a long time ago, maybe back in the Warp Tour days, someone said, hey, man, this is the one thing that most bands get wrong or some form of advice. Um, I'll, I'll give you a second to man, think about it. I know that's a tough one. I'll play so suddenly real quick and one. I'll stall for a second. I'll give you a second to think about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I love how Thanks, I love how so all of your music is very... It's I don't like I, I I don't think there's an easier way to say it, but I want to say it's very theatrical, like all the yeah. or, arrangements and orchestral stuff that adds to the build. But uh, did you think of the advice that that you're willing to share? OK, so follow up question. I overanalyze everything. So almost any question is going to come with a follow up question. I'm sure. OK. Um, what do you mean by the best advice? Do you mean for touring? Do you mean for being in a band? Or do you mean for the creativity side of it? Just in general, um, because this is like a local band show, I feel like a lot of times when we have bigger artists like yourself on, they they can give advice of, of something that maybe they a mistake they made early on. Like, don't do that. When sometimes bands are like, oh, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. And you go, no, 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 don't do that. Do this instead. Spend the money here instead, over here, whatever, whatever. Right. Um, three things. First thing, don't tour in an RV. Don't do it. They break down. It's a bad time and you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> There's going to be good times, but it's going to be overwhelmingly bad times to overshadow any of the good times. So number one, don't tour in an RV. It's not worth it. Okay. Number two, um, make sure you set up your publishing every single artist who's not on a label even if you are on a label if there's no publishing deal set it up it is split up between um the the melody and like the lyrics so there's it, it's weird it's so confusing learn it look into it learn it that's where you're going to make most of your money from it's not going to be from like spotify streams it's going to be because if you're especially if you're on a label um, a lot of deals, I mean, they're better now. They're more like 50-50 deals now, but they used to be like, you know, 78-12 or something. It was bad. So, that's that, I don't think my math just added up, but that's okay. <laughs> Wait, yes, it did. Jesus. Uh, anyways, yeah, set up your publishing, make your money. It's owed to you. You wrote the music. You deserve that money. And a lot of times your label... Um, if there's no publishing deal, won't tell you about it. 
because like you know why would they right um or a manager like they don't get a cut of that why would they even know about it um i think it's different nowadays than it used to be like four or five years ago before like every tour i would do i would ask um i would ask the people the guys on the tour and be like hey do you have your publishing set up just random conversation and they go no what do i you mean like you mean like distro kid <laughs> or like tune course no that's not publishing you mean so like bmi like, ascap all that stuff but there's more there's more there's uh um song trust sound exchange like song trust gives they'll collect money and keep it unclaimed for years like years and years and it'll just sit in like a uh, publishing limbo i'm writing this so down. you really yeah sound, yeah do it S sound i used to be in bands and i'm wondering if i have a, a bank of money just sitting there <laughs> you could it's totally possible if you get any kind of significant plays online uh yeah like that generates publishing royalties every time also if you're touring and you're playing shows in venues those count as performance publishing royalties so just like if your song is played on a jukebox in a bar you get a publishing cut a publishing royalty every time that happens so you have to submit it i mean so that's nice. number two this is this <laughs> hold on before we go to number three this is probably like the six or seven hundredth interview i've done and this is easily the best advice i've ever gotten <laughs> from from an artist please continue sir right i i had to think about it um make sure you're running your band as a business if you want to succeed with this as your career you have to run it like a business it's not always fun but there are ways to figure out to run it like a proper business while still doing the things you want to do and being creative with it and having fun with it like have fun with it really that should be my third one um but it's hard to have fun with it when your band's falling apart because you have no money so like if if it's run well and run properly and you're keeping track of of your in and out money wise um and you're thinking ahead a little bit and you're planning and you're staying organized you can you'll be so much less stressed out and that'll make it more fun because really like that's what you want to do you want to have fun in your career that's why we're musicians that's that's like it we have a blast it's pat we have a strong passion for it we want to have fun so like make sure the hard stuff set up properly so you can have fun so it's less stressful um i have so many more but like those are the top three for sure dang that number two mind blown I had no idea that you could get publishing from a live show performance. That completely uh -huh. changes it's called, everything. It's called performance royalties. Wow. Um, yeah. Back to the music. Uh, what what is the song from Postscript that you're that you're most proud of uh, that we can actually play? I know you've got some new stuff coming, but uh, mm -hmm. as far as what we're able to play um, right here, what, what would you say your most proud song? It would either be "So Suddenly" or "The Witch in the Wood." The Witch in the Wood is a crazy song. If there's um, any, if the there's whole, any videos for any of these, let me know and I'll jump over to YouTube. There is, yep. Okay. There's a video for it. It's, it's a completely animated video, and it, um, the whole story of that song is essentially the the witch represents suicide, um, and this guy has this dream where he's walking down this path in the woods and. On the left, there's this broken down, like decrepit um, cabin, really creepy, horrible vibes from this place. There's a dead horse attached to a, a carriage still just laying there, like clearly like you wouldn't go there, but there's a fire inside and it's shelter. And this witch comes out and she's like, come on, let's go. And then to the right where the path veers is this dark path that goes into the woods where he can't see anything complete unknown right so like that's terrifying and then on the other side you have this other thing that's terrifying but you know immediately you could have warmth and you see it but you're about to go hang out with this witch that will probably kill you so 
you got to decide, do you want, do I want to take this easier route that I can clearly see is not going to turn out well for me or go the scary route that's just completely unknown? Um, and that would be like continuing on with life. And the other one where there's instant comfort, but it's clearly not good for you would be taking your own life. So it's the, the lyrics and the storytelling in that one is I'm really proud of it because there's a shit ton of lyrics. All right. Way to set it up too. Um, Really quick, we had a, a band called Nebulous State on before you were on, and I they've told us yeah. during the interview that they've been trying to to work with you. So they're saying in chat right now, please don't forget about us, JT. <laughs> DM me on Instagram, like I said. Nebulous that's, State, that's hit the him, way. hit him up on Instagram, and it, it'll get her done. That is the way. That is the way. The witch in the wood. When you reached out to someone to make the video, did you? How did they? How did you go about explaining to them like this is kind of the idea of how I want this video to look, or do they just kind of create it based uh, on the were, lyrics? No, I, so I, I wrote out the story, like in kind of what I wanted it to, how I wanted it to play out, which is normally what I do with most of our music videos. Um, I'll write like the original script, but for this, I did that. And then there was this movie and I can't remember the movie right now, but it had the, the sequences that, um, really kind of the artwork looked like this sort of and that was the uh the number one like example i was like make it as close to this but with your own uh twist and style to it as possible and i'll be happy and that's what he did and he just knocked it out of the park hell yeah i mean it looks cool already for sure is there a style like postscript kind of seems like you can kind of do whatever you want as far as genre wise with this project. Is there a, a particular genre that you haven't haven't done yet that you are you're like preparing to release to us? Um, I think really more more than just doing whatever I want. It's more so I've been trying to find the sound I want. Um, it's a nice and way to say. I'm it. just not li I'm not limiting myself in that search. Right. So like if I want to put out this kind of song and I'll put out this kind of song, if I want to put out a like more funky kind of song, I'll put out a more funky kind of song. Um, but the, the next song I got coming up that I'm going to be dropping next month that I've been teasing on TikTok and stuff, that one, I think it's probably going to be the direction I'm going to head with it because it's really a mix of what Postscript kind of sounds like already and Famous Last Words. It was actually written as a Famous Last Words song. It was just piano and a vocal idea. Um, I structured the whole song out and wrote all the vocal melody and I showed it to the guys and um, they just weren't like vibing it super hard. So I said, okay, I'll just, I'll make it into a postscript song and see what happens. And it, that's the sound. It's a mix of the two. And I think- It was that's, meant to go that route. It's gonna, I think so because it's, um, it's different. It's different than any any other stuff you hear right now because it's structured like a metalcore song, but it's, you know, like a pop-ish song. It's weird. It's darker. It's cool. Um, there's more, there's a lot of energy to it, even though it's like a pop song. So I'm pumped. I'm really excited to drop that one. Chad wants me to ask about Santa Came to Slay. Yes. Can you, can you give us any... It? I, they're not saying specifically they want us to play that song, but so I, maybe I'll cue it up after the negative. Um, but what does the negative mean to you? Oh my God. That's a big question. Um, so that EP, that took me like a year to write and to develop the, the concept. I probably oh, a little over a year, actually. Uh, I know it's really short, but it was always meant to be that short. Um, the whole story was going to be the, the photographer finding out that the, he, like, he has this vision of the end of the world coming, right? And then the second song is him dealing with that and it happening. So it's, it's really cause and effect to a T. And then the third track is just is more, um, we always do like a little bit of extra content that goes along with whatever we release just to tie the story in a little bit more. So the spoken word track, that actually took me the longest to write. Um, I spent a solid week, like eight hours on my back porch every day, just sitting with a book, 
trying to think of what to do and how to word this the right way because I wanted to explain who this character was um, and give a lot of information just through his monologue. So if you really pay attention to that monologue, it it says a lot about who the character is um, because you know you don't get that opportunity within the lyrics. Um, you're so limited with lyrics. You want to give enough story, but make it big enough for people who don't know the story to follow along and still enjoy. So all the extra content needs to be delivered in another way, which is why we did the, the spoken word thing. And that, I, I feel like subconsciously, it was me kind of thinking about this, where we, like the state of the world was at, um, the state of my life was at, where there was just so many unknowns and so much um, big, epic, disastrous kind of stuff going on, but you didn't know, you just didn't know enough. Like there were not enough facts yet. There was, uh, we didn't know when touring was gonna come back. We didn't know the effects of this stupid COVID crap. We didn't know anything. So it's like this looming disaster is kind of hanging out there um, and you're just sort of waiting for it. So I think, I, I sort of connected the dots with that like after the fact, but thinking about it is like, there's no way that didn't play a part in that concept, but it originally was going to be like more cult based. And it was going to be like this guy who's walking through the forest and he sees this flower and this flower opens up and he sees this vision of the universe, uh, two universes like colliding. And it was, it was going to be like this creepy hippy dippy far cry five kind of thing. Um, I love I love the and, fact that like when you tell your stories, you come off as someone that when you write lyrics down on paper, it doesn't hit you until the words jump off the paper and you just get engulfed in the vision of where the song could go and and you have that mentality of where when traditional artists write down lyrics, they're just kind of trying to not saying they're just trying to fit it to like the the track or or the beat or whatnot. Mm -hmm. You you think ten steps beyond that. And how how is this going to work when this melody hits here and how this video and how it's going to represent it and, and this lyric isn't strong enough like all that comes across in how in your writing and I appreciate that. It's a it's a bigger picture thing and um, really that comes from my love of musicals. I grew up listening to a lot of musicals so like I I love writing metalcore music and I love telling stories and I've just that uh, it's that was always so inspiring to me was how people could tell these full, very detailed, very um, moving and emotional stories through songs. Um, and I just wanted to carry that over to the, the metalcore genre. So that's what I always tried to do. If I'm lucky enough to have a good story idea. Like I've had so many where I've been like, whoa, that's a great idea. Then revisited the next day and been like, what was I thinking? This is terrible. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I think I feel so, like uh, most musicians have been there before, <laughs> for sure. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, dude. And it, it is really nice to have a story. Um, it can it can go e one of two ways. It can be like really difficult because you're boxed in, or it can be super helpful because you have a basic skeleton. Mm -hmm. Um, or it can be both. Sometimes you know it really depends. I think there's there's things that help you and there's things that hold you back when you're writing concept records. But um, I just love to do it so much that like, I'll figure it out. And if I can't figure it out, one time I spent like six, seven months writing this con this nightmare concept, scratching that, and then using a lot of those elements to write uh, the Incubus, the story of the Incubus. Before we so. play before we play the negative, we've reached uh, what I refer to as the fun part of the interview. We've got all the basic all right. basic questions out of the way. A, are you down to do some beer chugs? B, what is your strongest knowledge in film or TV? I know more about Star Wars. I know more about The Simpsons. What do you feel like is the strongest? Because I'm going to try and generate some trivia and stump you based on what you feel like is the strongest part. Could be anything, Harry Potter, uh, anything in the world. Just whatever you feel like your strongest knowledge is in either film or TV. And uh, after it's, that, I want to know if you're down to review a couple local bands with us, of which there could be any genre. Oh, I love all of that. Um, yeah, I would have to say adult cartoons like 
American Dad, uh, Family Guy, Bob's Burgers, South Park. Oh, you're getting Futurama. stumped today. You're getting stumped I've today. I've seen all of those a million times. Um, South Park. Fiance, South, South Park works. South Park works. Yeah, okay. she gets mad at me when I remember lines like full full on scenes <laughs> from from episodes, but I don't remember like you know our anniversary or something. <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember Just that. Delete some of your stupid cartoon knowledge and remember our anniversary. It's like yeah, <laughs> I really should. That's a problem for sure. I don't mean to remember this stuff. I just do. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then Chad has a quick question. They want to know if you're considering doing another short film for any of uh, your guys' last few albums. Man, I would, I would love to. Love nothing more than to do that. Even if you know, I wouldn't even necessarily want to act in it. Acting's hard. It's um, it's really hard. So. I, I think I'm more excited about putting the thing together and then letting the good actors do their job. And I like I like directing and producing and writing. That's that's really fun for me. Um, and I would, like I said, I'd love to. I even started writing a Council of the Dead script because that story is like, um, I'm really proud of that story. And I think it would be a great movie. But would you ever direct a film? Money. If if the if it all presented itself, would you ever consider doing uh like directing a film? I'd co-direct a film to start, for sure. I've done some co-directing. I've just never, um. I I don't feel confident enough in my experience to direct something full on, and have someone put that much money into into me and and entrust me with that as far as movies go. But I would absolutely co-direct or produce or something like that um for sure and someday after more doing you know having more experience doing directing i would love to yeah that'd be sick um but the reason we haven't done another like short film is that shit is so expensive it's so expensive um council of the dead could not be a short film it'd have to be a full ass movie um there's too much going on and that like even to, the bare minimum budget to make that like really work in the way that I want it to work, you're still looking at like a few million dollars. Like th that's a, and that's like a baby, baby budget. It's crazy. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Like, unless I wanted to just full on DIY, which, you know, these days is definitely more doable than it was just a few years ago, like getting that good quality. But, um, yeah, it's crazy. It's expensive to do that stuff. As someone that's a big South Park fan, I have your question queued up. But before we get to it, we're going to jam the negative. All right. Uh, really quick. I do want to know. And I already forgot the question off the top of my head. I just, I forgot. Your trivia. <laughs> my bad. Your trivia for South Park is Stan's sister, who goes by the name of Shelly, is a big fan of what singer? What is Shelly's favorite pop artist in South Park? I give you a hard one to start. That is a hard one. So the, the you have to think back because she has the posters of this pop artist on her wall in her room. Oh, okay. That that I probably won't know if it's just a poster on her wall. I mean, I, I think I think she mentions was... it a couple of times, but uh, specifically in the movie she tells the grounded kids through her retainer she is going to listen to <laughs> records. And it's a female pop artist. I don't know. I don't know this one. Chat, Vone, Vone if you know it, go ahead and let us know. Uh, Matt, what's the next question you got for JT? Um, question, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> um... What what vocal styles of like people did you take inspiration of when you were pra like when you were practicing your vocals and everything like that? Because I actually practice off of you, honestly. Oh, that's awesome. I thought this was gonna be a South Park question. Um So <laughs> <laughs> uh, flash flashback to high school. Who you you're driving around in your car? And you're just cranking this to eleven and, and screaming at the top of your lungs. What artists are you jamming? And uh, you just you're like, you know what? I can hit those notes. 
Let's make a band. Yeah, so if if it's just like that, then you know, all the two thousand eight metalcore day to remember, attack attack, asking Alexandria, like jammed those records and sang along. But I wouldn't say I necessarily tried to emulate any of them with my voice. It was more like um I've been singing since I was twelve. So well I've been playing guitar since I was twelve. I was singing long before that. But um, I think I already found, knew what my voice was like and what I could do for the most part. And I just tried to always do better with that. So um, it was never really about style back then as much as, as it was about hitting like the notes, right? Like, especially in that time, like 2008, like everyone, it was all about who could sing the highest. Do you guys remember that? Like, yep. Craig yeah. Owens can sing the highest, or, or um, Kellen Quinn. what's his name, Kellen Quinn, or uh, Vic Fuentes, or Tyler Carter. Like they can all. You're sing in the that highest. category if for you sure. Sing high, then you're the good yeah. singer. You know. You're definitely in that category. Yeah, I can sing pretty high. Um, I feel like I don't like it when I sing super, super high because you lose all the character because you're pushing so hard. And you're tightening your chords so much that you're just like hitting this very solid note. At least for me, I lose a lot of my character um, and the, the the stuff that makes it more interesting when I'm hitting those notes. Um, and that's something I could always I need to just work on to bring the character to that. But I haven't um, been able to nail it just yet. You know, so yeah, always working, always trying to get better. Chat is saying everyone in chat is saying the answer is Lord. But that is actually not the correct answer. The answer yeah, that... we're, we're, we're looking for is Britney Spears. But because Lord, I think, is technically the correct answer with obviously Stan's dad being Lord, we'll, we'll give them the spin. Oh, I have to do a shoey? Mother f A shoey? Uh, we had an Australian band on a while back, and they were like, bro, you're not really drinking beer unless you take your shoe and pour beer in it. I know that sounds disgusting. But I have to do that now because that's that's what the <laughs> wheel great. has determined. So if you're down to chug uh, some light sky blue moon with me, although I don't have that, I'm going to pour some beer in a shoe. We do want to play some local bands for you. This is a band out of New York called okay. Promises Unsaid. Let me know what you think. JT, do you ever do you ever A and R for for any, any labels or independents? Like, you know what? I got these guys that'd be perfect for for your label. Do you ever do you ever just like shoe a band a certain direction and help them out or? Do you kind of keep well, it too? I work too... for a label now. I just yeah, started. Let me say that. Let's let's um, plug them. Plug them. At, Thrill at Thriller Records. Yeah. That oh was, yeah, Thriller. That Hell really yeah. Good. I I I loved how that started out. That was like. That got me feeling away. That was dope. Yeah. Very cool. Is that? Promises and said out of uh, New York. They're an unsigned band. Kind of has like really? a Michael Jackson like metalcore vibe. They do scream too. Oh, yeah. What is what is uh what's it like working with Thriller? And two part question. Was your experience with In Vogue Records back in the day a good one or a bad one? Um, that's a really interesting question. So Thriller is actually um, In Vogue is under the umbrella of Thriller. I work with I still work with Nick Moore, and he's the one who signed us to In Vogue. I think um, back as a younger band, I didn't get it and i would say the majority of younger bands don't get it they uh they just think that i, I was very entitled right and it was gonna go my way or it wasn't gonna go at all and you know i felt like i i deserved that which in a sense i did this is my creation this is my baby but once you sign a contract you're you're in a partnership so it's important to treat it as a partnership and if you and if you're not planning on doing that then don't sign the contract right um there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that you just don't think about um but it's still a lot of work and it's usually the boring work like the really tedious um cataloging and submissions and license and like making sure everything is set up right so that your release has like the best possible chance of doing well that it has and that's a lot of stuff that's like not fun work it's not creative work so you don't think about it as much but it still gets done and it's just like oh the label did nothing for me it's like well that's not true 
they did a, a lot of stuff that you just don't really know about. And um, they would they set up I the think, publishing behind your back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, they didn't do that. That would be a big no. I didn't mean it towards <laughs> you. I'm just saying, like, that's just never mind. Continue. Right. <laughs> um, so, I mean, they they gave us they gave us like our foot in the door with Invoke. That was huge. And I would uh, I don't think we would be where we are without them. At the time, I I thought I knew best about everything, and I thought that um, no matter no matter what, I was I was right. I was young. I was dumb. You know, I was eighteen. <laughs> So, but he was also a younger label. So we were like both learning and growing. Um, and we kind of had this, this growth spurt together with, with, uh, with the release of two Face charade. And that was really cool. Um, there was no bad blood when we left. Uh, what ended up happening is we just fulfilled our contract. He offered us a new one and we said, you know, we're going to see, um, what else is out there for us? And it was, and that was it. And it was totally, totally cool. Um, we kept working with, with each other on other things and, and to talk in and we never lost touch. So what ended up happening is, um, you know, really just the beginning of this year, um, Shan over at SBG Shadowborn group, which is the a label that we put, uh, Arizona out through he was letting me know that they were looking for a project manager. And I was kind of looking around for, um, for a new, a new like full-time job. I needed, you know, ready to make some money, like real, real money. <laughs> um, and that job security. And he, uh, he said, well, they're looking for one. I'm not sure if it's, you know, remote or not, but you might as well ask. And I, so I hit him up and I showed him all the stuff that I did for the negative release because the negative was released completely independently. Um, I did everything as far as like the, the setup and, and just putting it all together and making sure it went smoothly. And I, I use like this really great project management software that's online. It's free. It's called monday.com. Um, and I built this whole system with that software to essentially run me through the beginning stages of a release all the way to the end stages of a release. And I showed uh, Nick, Nick Moore and the uh and bob becker at thriller i got on a zoom call with them and i was like so this is what i did i know you guys aren't really looking for a remote position but let me just show you and i showed them how how i went about it what i did um what i would have done if you know a certain circumstance came up and we talked about that and that's what that's what got me the job so um yeah uh thriller's amazing I love working with them because everyone on the team is really all about making sure the artists are like doing what they want as much as possible. Like we want them, we want to bring their vision to life. Um, and if did you, we don't did you do say well it was Monday, Monday.com? Yep. It's an interesting title for the website, but that's, that's essentially a free project manager website. Yep. I wrote that down too. I mean, you're pay, dropping knowledge left too, and right. But... You're dropping knowledge on us left and right. We appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, you really have to build it out to, to fit your specific project, but all the tools are there. Um, and then you just have to figure out, you know, how you want to set it up. But yeah, I, I love working for Thriller. Um, I've learned a lot since when we, since we first signed to Invoke. Um, and I'm super grateful for all of it. All the good times, the bad times, the times I was right, the times I was wrong, all of it. Um, it got me to where I am right now. And that comes all full circle to being present with what you have. And if I take a step back and look at what I have right now, uh, there's no way I couldn't be grateful, you know? Humble response. I like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play In the Blink of an Eye next. But before we do that, I got one more. South Park redemption question for you, sir. Redemption question. Here okay. we go. In South Park, who performs the exorcism to remove Kenny's soul from Cartman's body? Chef's parents. That is correct! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> well done. We need about two 
Let's see what it lands on for you, sir. This is in the blink of an eye. Famous last words. I mean, I, there's not a song that you've made I don't like yet. I'm just gonna say it like that. <laughs> I think we got time for about two more questions. Mac, go ahead and get your final question ready. My final question is going to be, um, with all that Famous has accomplished and, and PostScript, and I know you have the new stuff coming out, I want to know what's your worst gig story. You guys are you guys are plugging in. You're at you're at the show, and boom, the curtains open, and everything goes wrong. Give me your worst um, gig story. Man. I mean, there's a few. Like, there's many. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, a cool one that actually has a good story to it. Because, like, I could just tell you one where everything literally went wrong. Strings were broken. Tracks were fucked up. Um, ears were fucked up. Everything was wrong. But that's not, like, a great story. It was just like, yeah, everything went wrong. And that was the show. We trucked through it <laughs> what else but can you do <laughs> a, good, a good story one um would be a show that i'm pretty sure we played in michigan um i don't know it doesn't really matter where it was but anyways we were playing and it was around council two face two face era and our tracks went out right before the chainsaw part in um to play hide and seek with jealousy so like all our tracks go out and that whole part that's like a everyone goes silent completely silent and then over the pa it goes ring 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 you know the, the chainsaw comes up so instead i knew they were out and we're all looking at each other like oh my god what are we gonna do in this weird awkward pause and i just stood up on the on the monitor on the floor and i just went ring 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 <laughs> over through the mic and and everyone just lost it like we all just started laughing so hard the guys on stage uh everyone in the crowd like it was just so stupid and so funny and just so like you know what are you gonna do um fill it in and make it enjoy like to make the best of a bad situation and like have fun with it because when shit goes wrong um, there's no point in being super upset on stage because that's going to give off that it, people are going to feel that upset energy that you're putting off and they're going to be like, oh, I don't feel great anymore. Like I was feeling good and now I'm not feeling good because I'm watching other people not feel good and it's not a good time. So if you just like turn that off and try to enjoy it the best you can and like make it fun for not just yourself, but for everyone else there, because if you're having fun on stage, most likely people who are watching you are also going to have fun because it's infectious, like energy and, and you're the, what you're feeling is so infectious. So if you're feeling shitty, um, people in the crowd are going to pick up on that and they're not going to, they're going to feel shitty with you and they're going to not have a great time. But if you're having fun and people are watching you have fun, just shamelessly having fun and uh, they feel comfortable. That's like, Oh, look at this person. The person I'm here to see is completely opening up, totally vulnerable. Just, having a blast like i can do that too i can open up and be a little vulnerable here and, and have a blast and that's why we go to shows so like it's super important to just do that um even when everything goes wrong like just try to have as much fun as possible because even a lot of the times most audience members won't even know anything went wrong like you're just like switching your whole mood and then uh no one knows why <laughs> so like just have fun with it. Just keep it positive. Enjoy keep, your time. Keep it at light. Keep it a positive. Keep it a fun. Try to. I mean, that's the time to do it. Like, you can't always keep it positive, but like, if you're gonna, that's one of those times on stage when you're entertaining someone. It's my buddy Mac Attack's 30th birthday. He's my co-host today. Mac, send JT out with either a question or comment, whatever you'd like, sir. Happy on birthday, stage. by the way. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, totally honestly you've you guys have all made my birthday way better than it's been in years so Hell thank yeah. you for that. um keep doing what you're doing i know that you said that you know you have the low self-esteem kind of thing you always want to reach higher and higher and higher and yeah. you always think that you can do better but honestly you're doing really good dude um i 
like I was telling BG earlier, I showed my wife your music with Postscripts and with Famous. She oh, loves yeah. her. Um, she asked me when you guys are coming to Indiana. Okay. Uh, because, because she wants to go. So that's that's definitely a plus, man. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> I'll send you a cover later that I did um, yeah. of I'll Be Okay. Oh, really? And, and, that's sweet. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, I did a cover of it. I'd love to send it to you, get your feedback on it. Um for sure. But you're doing you're doing amazing, man. Keep Thank up the you. great work. I appreciate keep up that. keep up the training, the you know, the vocals, doing shows. I know you always want to reach higher, but be be proud of where you are now, man, because you're you're doing amazing. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Like and that's that's the advice back to anyone who's a musician who's like chasing their dreams. Don't get caught chasing right. the dragon like in south park right <laughs> you'll never catch him you'll never catch him never you're never okay. gonna have sick truth <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy the ride enjoy it as much as you can and it's not always easy to do that um coming from experience but you got to keep trying to do it because right that's that's what's gonna make it um make make it worth it in the end is that you're happy and you're enjoying it so what we right. learned today, Monday.com, help set up your your promotion or your your marketing publisher. What was it again? I'm sorry, I didn't write. That. I just wrote that. Project Monday. management software. Project management um, software. You, it's it's a glorified to do list, but it really works well if you set it up the right way and know what you need to do. Like so, a big part of it is knowing what you have to do from the beginning to the end. So like, it's hard if you don't know those things. Because a lot of times, if you're with a label, they'll just do it. So, and that's the stuff behind the scenes I was talking about. So, you really um, talk to people who do know what they're doing. Learn as much as you can about every step of the way. And then uh, put it in there. Break it down to baby steps. And even every little baby step. Make it a make it an item on your to-do list. Every little baby step. Because every step you take and every time you you change it from the the status from working on it to done... It's like, that's the greatest feeling. And there's a little confetti that shoots out on the bottom. That's cool. When you, when you hit the done part. Yeah. We also <laughs> learned that uh, we could be millionaires if we go to SunTrust, SoundTrust, excuse me, and find out that we haven't been being paid for the last 10 Song, years song track. of hit em. Sound exchange. music spins. Um, yeah. We also, we, we also trust, decided yep. we're going to get rid of teams because it sucks. And we're going to switch to Zoom. Yes. And we also yes. learned that if you ever go on tour with Jeremy and he asks you if your publishing is set up, you sure as hell better tell him yes. Otherwise, you're getting an earful. No, tell me, tell me no. Tell me no so I can help you figure it out. Because that's your money. There you go. JT, I, I appreciate you spending some time with us, brother. Uh, I'll make sure this this uh, interview is on YouTube later. But much success to to all the stuff that's coming out with Postscripts. The, the negative is fantastic, and uh, we you. wish you nothing but success for the rest of 2022. Congratulations on the Thriller job. And, uh, dude, thank, thank you, so, you so thank much. you so much for hanging out with us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, I got to say this was super fun. Hell uh, yeah. I'd love to come back sometime in the future. All right, cool. You're invited back whenever you yeah. like, sir. Ple pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you, sir. Jamie, Jeremy told us the famous last words in Postgres. Hell yeah. Stay safe, brother. Thank you. <laughs>